Welcome everyone. This is part five in my series of lectures on cognitive disengagement syndrome, or what I call the other attention disorder, uh, which used to be called sluggish cognitive tempo. In the earlier lectures, we reviewed the symptoms of CDS, very different than those of ADHD, pretty much involving daydreaming and staring, uh, passivity, uh, perhaps occasional hypo activity and sluggishness, but an overall pattern of simply disengagement of the mind from the external context around the individual and focusing more on mental content, mental activity. Uh, and then we looked at comorbidity, principally with depression, to some extent anxiety, especially social withdrawal. We also looked at the uh, pattern with impairments uh, where CDS cre creates very focal impairments in work, in school, in social relationships, whereas ADHD is much more pervasive. We also talked about developmental stability of CDS, very stable over time, very trait-like in its presentation, which is what we're looking for if this is a real disorder. Uh, and then finally, we looked at what little research exists on the causes of CDS. Uh, and again, looking similar but not identical to the kinds of causes of ADHD. Uh, neurological difficulties, uh, EEG problems, psychophysiological problems, uh, findings on neuroimaging showing greater brain volume rather than less, but especially we are seeing problems with the default mode network, which is the part of the brain involved in mind wandering which is quite different than what we see in ADHD, which is much more of a frontal lobe executive disorder. So uh, lots of stuff to be done here research-wise uh, in the future with CDS, but beginning to see some patterns emerging here around uh, mind wandering, daydreaming, and this default mode network. So now we're gonna take a look in this lecture at just what is going on uh, in CDS, what is its underlying nature? We know what it looks like behaviorally. We have that nice list of symptoms I reviewed in the first lecture, but what does all that mean? Uh, so let's take a look at that. Uh, one possibility, as we'll see here in this PowerPoint presentation, uh, is that CDS could just be a different problem with attention. We know that there are at least five or six kinds of attention in the human brain from arousal to alertness, to attention span, to orienting to information, to the ability to multitask, to uh, do multiple things at once called divided attention, uh, and then span of apprehension, how much can you take in around you? Those are all different components and networks of attention in the brain. And, and CDS just could be a problem with the focused attention network, the one that we use to orient and attend to our external world. Whereas ADHD, as you know, is more of a problem with sustaining attention over time, particularly to tasks and the future, coupled with difficulties with being distractible. It could just be that. We have two different attention disorders here. But ADHD, we know, is not really an attention disorder. It's a problem with executive functioning. So is it possible that CDS is more than an attention disorder, more than just a problem with focused uh, attention? Um, and that's what we're going to explore here. Now, some people suggested that CDS might just be a problem of arousal. Uh, let's go all the way back to Alexander Crichton in 1798. He thought this was low power of attention, low arousal. Uh, is it a problem with hypersomnia, sleepiness, and low arousal? Well, we already found in an earlier lecture that that's not the case. There's some overlap of CDS with daytime sleepiness, but they're not the same. So I don't think we're dealing here with an arousal or uh, hypersomnia difficulty. Um, what about the possibility that CDS is linked with ruminative mental engagement? In other words, the person disengages from the environment and just ruminates and becomes preoccupied with their thoughts, usually their problems, much as we would see in depression or anxiety. Uh, is this simply the attention problem that goes with those internalizing disorders? Anxiety, depression, stress, OCD, PTSD? Yeah, that's possible. I mean, that has not been answered yet, but I don't think that that's likely, okay? Those kinds of 
preoccupations are associated with very active mental states of uh, rumination, preoccupation, and the individual often feels that they don't have much control over that, uh, that it's occurring whether they want it to or not. So research shows that this kind of excessive dissociation from the environment and absorption into one's imaginative activities uh, is more related to OCD and possibly depression, certainly not related to ADHD and, and may not be so involved in CDS, but we're not sure, time will tell. One of the things we keep coming back to that was suggested by um, Adams and uh, by Richard Milich in their paper back over a decade ago that was in my newsletter, the ADHD report, is the similarity between CDS and research going on in psychology on mind wandering, on pathological mind wandering, or what others have called maladaptive daydreaming. Uh, if you read that literature, the symptoms that they describe in people who report this condition uh, appear very similar to the symptoms that we see in our research on CDS. So this has led people to wanting to explore the overlap of CDS with pathological mind wandering and daydreaming. So could CDS be a problem with mind wandering? Well, mind wandering, first of all, is commonplace in people. When you go to the doctor's office and you're asked to sit for 10 minutes while you wait and you have nothing to do, you tend to engage in mind wandering. So uh, that's typical. Uh, and it's also associated to some extent with creative thought. I have this situation, I have a problem to solve, I'm gonna stop and engage in mind wandering and kind of think about various ways of handling that. So it, it can also be deliberate mind wandering as we see in creative mental activity. So it can be deliberate and it can be spontaneous. When it's spontaneous, like sitting in the doctor's office, uh, it's linked to engagement and activation of that default mode network, right? Whereas when it's deliberate, it's linked more with that executive frontal lobe activating our mind wandering, but constricting it to some extent, it's more convergent and related to the problem at hand that we need to solve. It's goal-directed mind wandering and more creative mind wandering than this kind of spontaneous mind wandering we do when we have nothing else to think about. Um, so when mind wandering is intentional, it can be constructive, right? But when mind wandering is unwanted, unintentional, we appear to slip into it too often when we're doing things that we find routine, repetitive, boring, uh, then it can become problematic. It can start to cause difficulties with getting the work done. We need to do more mistakes, for instance. So let's say I'm driving to work in the morning and it's a repetitive activity. I do it every morning and I start to engage in mind wandering, thinking about all kinds of various things, my morning, what's ahead, yesterday, my kids, uh, what, what have you. I start thinking about these other things I, and I'm disengaging from the environment. So I'm driving along, it's a routine activity, but I'm doing too much mind wandering and I miss the turn into the parking garage. So you see what happens? Excessive mind wandering interferes with performing that primary routine task. And it's interesting that people who have a lot of this mind wandering tell us that this often happens to them, that it interferes with other things that they're supposed to be doing, as if it's not quite volitional. They lose control over the mind wandering. So excessive, spontaneous, unregulated mind wandering can interfere with work activities, engaging the environment, goal-directed activities. So it can be problematic, not just a form of uh, taking up time and in the doctor's office, for instance, when we don't have anything else to do. This is a wonderful diagram from a paper on my mind wandering as spontaneous thought. And they break down in this review of the literature on neuroimaging, on mental states, that mental states in humans can be categorized into this two-dimensional grid. There is deliberate 
acts of mind wandering over here in a more extreme form goal directed thinking a little bit less deliberate is creative thinking a little bit less is even mind wandering and then dream states so this is more spontaneous thought this is goal directed and the individual is in control it's intentional up here we see on the other hand rumination obsessive thinking this is not deliberate this is automatic the individual feels they simply can't get control over this repetitive thinking usually about problems and social situations so a very nice way of breaking down the variety of human mental states that we see um, in in people all right now what is pathological mind wandering well if we back up here it's too much of this that is being too automatic rather than deliberate so too much going on here and what is happening in the mind could be one of four things could be all of them at different times the individual has disengaged and dissociated from the environment what's going on in the mind not sure we need more research on this one possibility that we hear from people with CDS is a lot of maladaptive daydreaming. This is more engaging in fantasies and in, in a fictional rendering of our experiences where we pretend to be, you know, superhuman, have superpowers, or, you know, slay our enemies uh, and overcome our difficulties and win the hearts and minds of, of other people. So there's a story going on in the mind that the individual finds compelling and keeps returning to that. That's kind of maladaptive daydreaming. We hear a little bit of that from people with CDS. Uh, more of what we hear is down here is the spontaneous mind wandering, uh, what you would call this kind of flitting from one idea to another, to another, to another, kind of what you're doing in the doctor's office or when driving to work. Uh, lots of different things that your mind is visiting. But by the way, over time, there's a propensity to keep coming back to unresolved problems and conflicts. Uh, and so it could be that that's the link over to depression, because research on mind wandering shows that the more people do it, the more it starts to focus on their problems and the more depressive symptoms they report. So maybe that's the link of CDS with with depression. Uh, then we have over here the state of mind we've already talked about, which is obsessive, brooding, ruminative, in which the individual finds it difficult to let go of these repetitive mental preoccupations with prior events and their negative outcomes. Uh, very self-absorbed, but mainly with things that went wrong and then just exaggerating them in their mind. It's kind of self-absorption uh, but it usually is linked with depression <clears throat> and to some extent anxiety and certainly OCD. We're not hearing an awful lot of this when we talk to people with CDS. It could be there, uh, particularly if the individual already experiences depression, but I think this is less of what's going on in the mind than these two over here. And then one other fascinating possibility, not inconsistent with the others, is mind blanking. You're in your nothing box. You're not thinking of anything. If anything, little parts of your brain may well be falling asleep, hence you're staring. Kind of looks like you have a form of uh, epilepsy uh, where you do get these staring episodes, uh, which are often associated with a petty mall uh, epilepsy. Uh, but you don't have epilepsy. Your mind is a blank. Uh, it's kind of like when you ask someone, particularly guys, well, what are you thinking about? Oh, nothing, right? Uh, I'm in my nothing box. So uh, it's very possible that people with CDS are moving across these three different mental states. And what they all have in common is disengagement from the environment, staring, passivity, sort of absorption in one's mental uh, activities or absorption in nothing at all, as in mind blanking. So time will tell which, if any, or all of these are involved in CDS. But this is kind of where researchers are looking right now 
in future studies. Okay, so that's what we think might be underlying CDS. Uh, in the final part, we're going to talk about what research exists on treatment of CDS versus ADHD. So please uh, join me for that one as well. Thank you.